we know our uh, uh, patient come to us with the complaints about the wrinkles or change in the facial uh, facial volume or perhaps a change in the quality of their skin. Uh, they are only common in when they undergo treatment is to look younger. So, as you can see, every face requires different uh, treatment according to individual needs and the aging process. So, you can see, uh, in, uh, as you can see, in order, uh, woman age from 20 to 70 in just a few seconds, but this is exactly what happened over the course of lifetime. In order to contrast the aging process, we can employ a series of combined treatment which require a good knowledge of anatomy. Uh, to approach this combined treatment, you need to have a good knowledge of anatomy. Uh, and above all, remember that the subcutaneous fat is compartmentalized as Rorich and Pesa have widely stated. And here you can see some of the superficial adipose compartment. So you can see the superficial fat compartment in, uh, in um, uh, medial cheek fat, nasal labial uh, fat compartment, middle cheek fat compartment, lateral cheek fat compartment, superior and inferior jaw. So, and uh, uh, what about uh, the deep fat compartment? You know, is the medial and lateral soup, the medial cheek fat compartment, and the buccal fat. Uh, now, uh, how do fat compartment age? Uh, the aging of the medial group uh, of uh, the superficial, you can see here, uh, fat compartment is characterized uh, uh, about downward migration, ptosis, and the nasolabial fold the hypertrophy. Uh, only the lateral temporal cheek fat is characterized by hypertrophy, and it does not have a tendency to migrate downward. So uh, superficial fat compartment, uh, most of the time give displacement and you have to repositioning the superficial fat compartment uh, just with threads. Uh, what about, uh, about the deep fat compartment, the, the compartment of the maxillary area, lateral uh, medial soup, uh, deep cheek, uh, medial cheek fat, is characterized by hypotrophy and slide down, non downward migration over reabsorbing bone. The fat compartment, you know, losing 100% of volume every year from the age of 30. And the only treatment you can do here is the volumizing of the deep fat compartment. So, but now uh, it's important uh, to speak uh, about the retained ligament. As you know, the retained ligament uh, age and relax and contributing to a modification of the face. Uh, we can say that they are responsible for modifications and cause sagging. The areas of the greater interest for traction with the threads are the nasolabial fold, Nasolabial area, the marionette line, and the jowl. So, as you can see, there are the retained ligament that we have to distinguish into three true uh, and false. The true ones are orbicularis ligament, zygomatic ligament, mandibular ligament, and buccal maxillar ligament. It's very important. All the other are false ligament, and I pass when we wanted to reposition the skin. Uh, another uh, important uh, here you can see how ligament relaxes uh, and how the face show proper stigma. So here. Yeah, you can see the ligament, you can see the orbic, uh, orbital retained ligament, the zygomatic retained ligament on the cadaver, the buccal maxillar retained ligament, and mandibular retained ligament. It's very, it's very clear. Uh, 
the aging leads to the ptosis of the tissues that enhance the nasolabial fold and the marionette lines. The ptosis of the chin and the lower cheek skin modify the jawline. But uh, and here you can see it's very clear what happened on, on the jawline. You can see when we are young and then as time passes, so you can see how um, uh, it modified uh, our jawline. It is important to tight in order to have a good rejuvenation. And the global improvement of the patient face is important to do an ambulatorial mini invasive technique uh, with minimal downtime and easy technique. So, and here you can see this patient uh, show us how age is different to age when uh, from 20 years old start in the periorbital area and then the, uh, to follow the, the temporal, lateral temporal cheek fat compartment. Uh, the solution when we want to rejuvenate, uh, to, to give a good improvement of the face is a global correction of the disharmony uh, through a personalized corrective action plan. plan. And uh, now we are going to, to speak about, uh, uh, about Cefiller. Cefiller is a, a new uh, idea uh, arrived from Dr. Alessandro Gennai is a plastic surgeon in, in Italy, but he lives in Miami. And uh, uh, we, uh, we thought about uh, uh, the medical lift uh, uh, millimeter and uh, adipose tissues is our gold. So uh, we are going to speak, uh, uh, this, uh, um, there is a kit is very important, is designed for aesthetic physician who wanted to perform the real regenerative medicine even though he does not have any particular surgical experience. The aim of the regenerative medicine is to regenerate the tissues and restore volume loss due to the aging. In our facial rejuvenation, it is fundamental that the aesthetic physician can perform completely, safely, easily, and in his own clinic, the real regenerative medicine with mesenchymal stem cells. So, uh, as you can see in regenerative medicine, we have to speak about the grafting of the tissues and not about a grafting of fat or lipofilling. The cells of the stromal vascular uh, fraction are found in tissues close uh, to the regeneration bearing blood vessel. Therefore, the collect tissues is formed of mature uh, uh, adipocyte and of the much more important cell of the stroma vascular fraction. And here you can see adipocytes and our uh, stroma vascular fraction. We have fibroblast, preadipocyte, granulocyte, uh, monocyte, and lymphocyte. Uh, when the pericyte is uh, stimulated, is uh, transformed in so, mesenchymal stem cells, adipose derived stem cells. And the, the cycle is followed. Uh, the pericyte uh, transforms uh, into uh, uh, adipose derived stem cells according to the tissues in which it is found and uh, transforming itself into adult mesenchymal line, adipocyte, endothelium, chondrocyte, osteocyte, myocyte, etc., etc. Uh, on average, we can consider that in one ml uh, of uh, cephila, we collect tissues uh, with the cephila technique about uh, uh, 150,000 to 200,000 stromal vascular fraction cells and adipose derivative stem cells. Uh, so uh, this is important because when, uh, when the, treat, uh, the patient uh, with the cephalia technique allow for the gra grafting of, uh, for, of uh, four milli milliliter of tissue, we can affirm that we, we administer at least 800,000 to one million of stroma uh, vascular fraction and adipose derivative stem cells. So, uh, 
uh, this is very important. Uh, but uh, uh, what about uh, um, Sir Filler thanks this uh, special guide open a new era, uh, era to the regenerative aesthetic medicine as far the simple as far the simple uh, taking zone is concerned any area can be suitable as long as there is a localized adipocyte with a minimal thickness of two centimeters and um, first of all we have to extract uh, this is uh, the patent of uh, our guide this is very important because you don't uh, uh, you, uh, with uh, thank this guide, uh, you can uh, stay at the same level or two centimeters and uh, don't permit it to go uh, too much down or up. And uh, you have uh, to collect uh, a real uh, stromal vascular fraction cells. So, first of, uh, first of all, we must extract the adipose cell uh, with the cannula present in the kit. The cannula you can see here. Uh, uh, that we use is uh, 0.8 millimeter to select a small cluster of fat. So, and uh, as I said before, you can see uh, in four milliliter uh, is the average of volume injected in a similar treatment. The cell dose is uh, 800 to 1 million of the stromal vascular fraction. So, you can see on the uh, abdomen hair the extraction of the, uh, the stem cells is very safe, is very easy, effective, and it, uh, um, it, it, it permits us to, to remain in the same correct plane and it prevents any risk to insert the cannula too deeply or too superficially. Uh, this is our um, how to prepare the anesthetic solution before uh, before to, um, to do this filler uh, treatment and aspirate uh, approve, okay. Uh, you can, uh, preparation of the anesthetic, uh, aspirate one ml of adrenaline in a 10 ml syringe and nine ml of a physiological solution. You can see adrenaline, and nine and hello physiological solution. Now you remove nine ml of solution and aspirate nine ml of lidocaine. If you obtain one to one hundred uh, one hundred thousand solution. So here is uh, you can see. The superficial uh, fat fluid is very, very uh, fluid. The cannula selected the small cluster and there is not a manipulation. And how to do it? This is uh, the, last, uh, the, the last new guide. Uh, is published uh, just in uh, 15, 20 days ago is the new one is very easy to use is a Ferrari of the guide when you wanted to uh, to uh, collect the, the fat in the abdomen area and uh, I'm going a little bit uh, okay but uh, all doctor you insert the insert the, the syringe in the guide block it and after you insert uh, op, uh, two millimeter, 1.5, two millimeter under the, uh, the skin and put it in the back and start to aspirate our, our fat, our stromal vascular fraction, our stem cells, how you want. Uh, and the guys has uh, two fundamental characteristics. It, is, uh, it allows, uh, allows the cannula to extend the maximum uh, of 15 millimeter. And it is a distance of 15 from, uh, millimeter from the cannula. This is uh, a very important. Um, 
you can see now uh, after you, you wash the fat and then you put it in a stand and you can see here you have all stem cells after the perpendicular insertion of the cannula up to the stop on the guide then you 90 degree rotation so as to keep the guide in contact with the skin and then you must emulsify about 15 20 passages between one syringe and another so it has to make the adipose tissues as fluid as possible before inserting in the area to be treated therefore considering that the minimum treatment with the filler technique allow for the grafting of the four millimeter of uh, millimeter of tissues we can affirm that we administer as i said before at least uh, one million of uh, stroma vascular fraction cells and adipose derivative stem cells. And uh, we can extract uh, from eight to 12 cc of adipose tissues. And uh, then we can use uh, on the... <laughs> okay, uh, the second part, and uh, this is the cons. Uh, we are speaking about uh, the polylactic, uh, polylactic threads, uh, silhouette soft, uh, are made in the United States, as you can see. And uh, we have uh, three, three kinds of sutures, uh, 8, uh, 12, uh, and 16 cones. The, the needle is always a 23 gauge needle and is uh, 20, uh, 12 centimeters long. The distance between one knock to, uh, knock to the other is 1.5 millimeter and is the same for all these threads. The only difference is the distance 8 millimeter for 16 cones and uh, 12 cones is 8 millimeter from one knock to the other and only 5 millimeter and only 5 millimeter for uh, 18, eight cones. So our uh, 100 polylactic acid uh, 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 stimulate more fibrosis, polylactic acid, and as the benefit of a long reabsorption time over two years. So you can see when you insert the sutures, so you have to insert, prepare the, uh, the entry point with the needle, 18 gauge needle. And then uh, the, you use the suture needle 23 gauge. You enter five millimeter in vertical position inside the tissues. And then you turn the needle 90 degrees. Then, and, and now you go towards the first exit point and you pass it through the skin with the, the first uh, half part of the suture. Then you enter with the second part of the sutures uh, uh, and you go with the second needle towards the second exit point. And now you pass with the second half part of the sutures with uh, uh, the other four cones. Then you collect the skin in the needle or you try to lift and uh, to tighten the skin towards the temporal area. Here you can see on the cadaver, I, uh, uh, as you can see, I, uh, I have inserted, uh, I inserted the sutures uh, on the cadaver. You can see the cones are colored in blue, uh, but it is impossible. The traction is very, very strong. So here I want to underline you be careful when you insert the sutures. Why? because uh, uh, you have to pay attention to the last cone and uh, you can see uh, 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 when the last cone put in horizontal position uh, on, on the skin, it's impossible uh, to insert the sutures. Uh, what you have to do, you have to lift again the sutures and uh, then you, uh, you follow the cones towards the entry point in order uh, to have a good improve, a good uh, pos uh, position of the shoot. So, 
here you can see two different uh, uh, poss possible insertion of the suture, straight line or right angle. Straight line when you want to improve uh, the zygomatic area, but you have to put minimal two or three uh, when you want to improve this area. Or when you want to improve the zygomatic, uh, the zygomatic area, you put in a right angle or uh, straight uh, with the entry point located in the upper part of the zygomatic bone. And here you can see, uh, normally it is possible to use uh, uh, 12 cones, uh, sutures, uh, because you, have, you need to anchor it very strong in uh, the, the, the cones in this area, uh, the anchorage always is uh, in pre-auricular area. Uh, it's important, uh, it's very important uh, to consider the area to treat it uh, because uh, we, have the super, uh, we have to consider uh, which area you want to improve and you want to, uh, to give a, a, good in, a, a good result. Uh, so, uh, as, you, uh, as I said before, uh, every year uh, we, we lose uh, um, minimal 1% of our fat on the face. So, and uh, uh, the muscle is displaced by, uh, by this, uh, for the um, contractor. Uh, the muscle, the change, change the muscle, and what about uh, about the deep fat? Uh, the deep fat lose volume and slide down, and this is uh, the same for the retained ligament. So this is is important to consider the area to be treated. Why? Because the only area where you have a problem and normally where you we insert the suture is the nasolabial fat and the superior inferior jaw. And you can see slide down but in vertical position this is the, and you have to consider always the, the vector when you insert the sutures. Uh, it's important to understand the key concept uh, because uh, you have to consider the severity of this, uh, the sagging, the pulling point uh, and uh, the, the important the selection of the patient because all, not all patients are a good patient for uh, this treatment. So it is important to the most effective vector. This is incorrect application of our sutures, but this is the good and correct application. You can see when, when you lift, the nasolabial fold and the, the jowl, this is the, the vector you have to use in order to have a good result for a long time and um, where you have to insert the sutures in subcutaneous level, in the superior, medial or deep fat compartment and uh, be careful in the dermis or in the muscle but the patient feel pain and it is impossible to continue to insert. Uh, so, take a look at this patient, the hypertrophy of this area, and this is the area the, uh, of uh, fixity and anchoring, and here you have the ptosis and not uh, with the cones in this case, uh, but uh, uh, as you can see here, it's very, it's, it's very easy and are so strong when you want to improve the, this area. And is um, this, uh, these threads are, uh, are um, commercialized in, uh, in Asia, uh, not in Europe. Uh, this is why I had a webinar with uh, Asian people uh, uh, just a three, for three, four time. And this is uh, the treatment that uh, I did with their, their uh, threads. You can see here, enter with the second needle in the same entry point, and then you, you create a virtual knock because enter in the exit point and you anchor and stop the sutures again. The patient doesn't feel pain. Uh, the particularity uh, of this uh, curve, uh, curve thread 
is uh, the needle. The needle is uh, conical and it is impossible to have bruising. Is sometimes it's difficult to proceed, but uh, it's very safe uh, and uh, without uh, any kind of problem. So here I can put it in a straight, uh, but uh, uh, give uh, in this patient uh, I did the, the stem cells 15 days before, and exit point after the nasolabial fold in order to anchor it and to give volume to uh, lift the, the zygomatic area and anchoring, as you can see, in the temporal area. But you are in the safety line, always in the safety line. So here with the uh, cones, you can see I prepared just one entry point in upper part of the zygomatic, uh, the zygomatic bone. And uh, in the root technique, I exit just in the jowl and uh, I pass uh, through the loop with the second sutures. You can see here, I remove the needle and I tighten the first sutures and then I'm going to anchor it in uh, the temporal area. I held myself with uh, a cap of the, the needle. The second, just with, with uh, one entry point, you have like uh, four sutures in this case. It's uh, fantastic because you have a, a very big, uh, a very important uh, lifting effect. Here you can see the uh, stem cells after I injected in the zygomatic bone air stem cells on uh, and the same is very important to, to when you want to improve uh, the uh, the periorbital uh, periorbital area and the periorbicularis area is the, the very is the best uh, because uh, you have the result uh, very very important uh, this is why I wanted to underline again this, uh, this treatment uh, with Cetilla because in my opinion is the best uh, on 